Hello, and welcome to episode 4 of my Better Than Build Craft Let's Play. In this episode, the plan is to get my saw blade set up. So, to do that, I'm going to need to tan some leather. To do that, I'm going to have to have a heated stewing pot. And to do that, I'm going to need some nether rack. So, the plan is to just pop down to the nether, grab some nether rack, and then come back. Um, I thought I'll just pop the old nether portal here, because um, why not? Eh? I don't like accidentally doing the nether portal wrong, so I like to mark out the middle with mud, just so I can't balls it up. Although saying that, I bet I'll do it now, somehow. Especially with this jumping around and clicking. There we go, success. Um, I will record my trip to the nether, because I am literally just going in, grabbing some nether rack and leaving, but I could die in a hilarious fashion, so it's always best to record. Um, if I see some very easy to reach glowstone, I'll grab it, because obviously that's very important for filaments. But it's not the purpose of this mission. Alright, we've got a ghast straight off the bat. Oh, don't hit the glowstone. Um, I might have to deal with this ghast, I guess. Thinking about it, I could probably hit him. Alright, uh, let's go for this now. There we go. Any ghast tears? Doesn't look like it. Anyway, we're getting distracted. So, let's have a look where we've come out. Good, we're quite high up. That's why I built my portal at the top of my hill, really, because then you spawn closer to the top of the nether. Well, I think you do anyway. You, I remember hearing that once. I'm not sure if it's still true. But, um, yeah, so it shouldn't be too hard for us to get some glowstone when we need it, but that's not important now. That edge is a bit scary looking. But I'll just grab some nether rack so that I have enough to heat my stewing pot and I'll have to grind some up to um, make some concentrated well, to make some hellfire dust, sorry so I can make some concentrated hellfire bars but then I have to come back to grab the glowstone that we needed to make my hibachis that I can then use to stoke a fire but yeah, just a quick smash and grab so yeah, the plan is when to get back I'll set up my stewing pot and um, then I can tan some leather. But I'll yeah, come back when I'm ready to go. So, see you in a sec. Okay, I think the plan is I'm going to have my stewing pot just situated here in the factory um, and then later on I can link it up to Bellows to stoke the fire. So I'll just quickly build the old stewing pot. So there we go. I've got a 3x3 three three grid, grid of netherrack underneath, constantly on fire. Um, I've suspended my stewing pot by axles again, just because it looks nice, but um, obviously you don't need that. You can just have it floating. And then I've covered up with half slabs, so I'm not going to fall in my fire. So to just check this is working, I'll throw in some flour and it should be cooked into donuts and that looks like that's working fine which is great so stewing pot is good to go so now I just need to tan some leather but to, before I can tan my leather obviously I need to scour my leather um, I'm not planning on using my leather for anything other than tanned leather so I will scour the whole lot or at least attempt to so that be scouring away. Obviously as there's no collection system at the moment I am going to need to run around and catch all this leather. Um, so when I return I shall be ready to tan it. So back in a sec. All the leather's been scoured now so I can place my scoured leather in with my dung and that's going to give me 13 pieces of tanned leather 
and now with that tan leather I will be able to create some leather straps which I can then use to create a leather belt which I can then use to create a saw blade I'm not sure whether or not to have the saw upstairs or downstairs I might have it have it downstairs I guess because um, I know there is a way although I still don't have access to flowing water but you can make a sawmill quite nice and compact so you can just hold down right click and constantly place blocks in front of it and have it angled in a way where you can't accidentally place too many and that all the um, sawdust and mouldings and sidings and whatever collect into a hopper but without water we can't really do any sort of collection yet but um, yeah once this is all tanned up I'll be good to go with my saw blade Uh leather's all tanned now so I can use this tanned leather, a piece of this tanned leather to create some leather straps and I can create a leather belt and then using this belt some cogs and some iron and a couple of bits of wood I can create my saw so now I've just got to set up my circular saw which I shall place in this corner and then I'll be ready to get busy the saw blade is complete now, the sawmill kind of area um, so this switch is located above the gearbox under the floor so if I flick the switch it comes to life and then I haven't tested it yet but I should just be able to stand here hold down right click and I will saw all my wood interesting to note some of it is getting caught on that little ledge just underneath the saw blade see so if I was to have this automated in some way I'm guessing I'd have to take this block out and then have the water come round so it flows underneath and then comes down like here into a hopper so I could just stand here and then the water will flow into me um, but yeah so now I've got a greatly increased way of making gears as well as obviously being able to make sidings, mouldings and corners which I would need to construct my hoppers and also um, to construct pipes. Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to have to do a bit of a read up on the wiki before I can delve straight into it. But, um, I'm just going to get busy making lots of sidings, corners and mouldings, so back a bit. Now I've got a lot of siding, mouldings and corners. Um, we could take a very quick look at some of the build craft additions. So we are going to need some bellows, like so, and I need some iron, so I'll quickly go and get that. Ooh, creepers. Um, uh, let's have a look at this, shall we? Actually, um, rather than using wood there, I can use sidings, which uses half as much wood, obviously, because you get two sidings for one plank. Bit of a wood saver there. So, to make the basic engine, you have some bellows on a piston, and that makes you the wood engine. So now, I'm not sure if people watching this would have played Buildcraft before, but where it's been integrated with Better Than Wolves, things work a little differently. Everything seems a little bit harder to make. Um, and a bit more complicated to get running so this is a wood engine and it needs to be powered by mechanical power going into the back of it um, so we're also going to need some pipes to make pipes you take three panes and some mouldings down the side and that will make you your basic transport pipe so these are quite resource heavy so this is your basic pipe that will transport items along it to make a intake pipe you need to put some straps either end so now that's an intake pipe so this will 
has the ability, when powered by an engine, to take things out of, say, a chest or a um, furnace or wherever you may have. So I will very quickly try set up a demo for this. Um, I'm just going to grab some more iron. Look at those creepers! Oh. It's so tempting to play this on peaceful because if these blow up bit of this building, I'm going to cry. But I'll soldier on. Um, I guess I should probably show this on camera then, because I'm probably going to kill myself. Oh my god! <laughs> I was going to try sprint out the door. I'm going to have to like suicide from the ceiling. Um, I'll record this just in case it doesn't work, but with any luck we'll make water. Oh, there we go. But yeah, I'll come back when I've got my iron ready. So there's a new item been added to Better Than Wolves and Buildcraft. It's kind of a universal wrench, so this wrench is what you need to change the orientation of some of the Buildcraft items like engines, but it also works with better than wolves so you can use it to change orientation of axles and gearboxes you don't have to be bare handed you can do it using the wrench um, so for a very very quick example of how an engine works I won't montage this I'll leave it because this is all new to me so it'd be good to see all the mistakes I make so you can learn from them you need your engine I'm just going to do a simple pumping from one chest to another just as a guide but the useful things you can do for this obviously is pumping say from a chest into a furnace so once I've got a quarry or mining well which will allow me to do automated mining I can then pump things straight into different chests and furnaces and all sorts of awesome stuff so let's see how we're going to do this so we've got a chest here uh, might be a bad start spread it out a bit spread it out I've got a chest here and I want to pump it into something there and I want it to come out of this chest, so I'll just put my sawdust in as an example. Um, so I've got my intake pipes and my transport pipes, so I want it to take it out of that chest. And if I right click on the ground, it'll let me place it. And then I'm going to have it come along into this chest. So now this will only work if I power this intake pipe. So I need to place my engine next to that intake pipe. And then if I right click on it, this is currently facing the correct way, but if it was facing the wrong way, I think you can right click in it with a wrench and it will alternate, but obviously it's got nothing to alternate to. If it had more options, there was another pipe here, you would right click and it will change between the two pipes. So now I need to power this with mechanical power. So I need to take an axle, gearbox, axle, gearbox, and I can use my wrench to get the facing the right way. So now that is powered. So now that is powering this intake pipe. So it is taking sawdust from this chest and pumping it along this pipe into this chest. So this is the very basics of build craft now. If you can imagine this was a chest full of coal, it could be pumping into the bottom of a furnace. Then I could have a chest full of iron ore above it pumping into the top of the furnace, producing iron bars, and then I could have another pipe pumping that out into a separate chest. So I can just run along, dump all my coal in one chest, dump all my ore in another, come back later and it's all smelted for me sitting in a chest. Um, as you go on progressing through the ages, you get more complicated pipes, so you can have sorting pipes, it requires diamond, and in Billcraft it just requires diamond, in Better Than Wolves it requires diamond and like a computer chip. So it is proper high end late game, but that allows you to sort items. You can literally tell it whatever you want and the pipe will send it up, down, left, right, depending on how you sort it and program it. I'm guessing the reason they've made that so late game is because in Better Than Wolves you can use hoppers um, with their different filters, you know, with running water to uh, do your filtering. So um, yeah, that is the basics of engines and obviously you can turn them on and off by powering and unpowering gearboxes so if I turn that's not going to work is it? I need a lever but you know what I mean, if I turn that gearbox off this engine will stop um, the thing to know about wooden engines they never explode I think, yeah so even if this chest is empty and this engine no longer has any work to do 
it'll be fine, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, a bit of lag there. Uh, yeah, I was saying, if this engine has no work to do, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Don't quote me on that. If you've seen my previous Let's Play, you know I know nothing, and ghasts appear and try to kill me. But um, engines, this is blue, so it's cool, and then it'll eventually go green, and then yellow. Or does it go blue, then yellow? Yeah, blue, then yellow. And then um, it'll stay like that, because it's just a wooden engine. It won't ever go red, and then maybe explode. But um, Or it might go red. But anyway, it slowly speeds up how it works, but these shouldn't explode. The later engines that require cold work, if they um, you know, are working and there's nothing left for them to pump, they overheat and explode, so that's bad. But I'm pretty sure mechanical engines are safe. But um, yeah, that's it for this example, really. I'm going to guess quickly, see how long this video is. I've been babbling quite a lot. But if it's not too long, hopefully we've got time to set up our hopper processing, you know, our hopper to turn ground netherrack into hellfire dust and then I can get some hellfire bar bars, grab some glowstone, get some filaments, get some bark cheese and then I'll be able to turn that into a rendering pot which will allow us to make glue from leather and then I can use that glue to make waterproof pipes and then I'll be able to pump water into my factory and then I'll be happy because I'll be able to automate the collection of all my materials. So. I shall be back in a second. So yeah, I should just have enough time to squeeze in making my hopper ground netherrack filtering device. Um, but yeah, as you can see, all the sawdust is nearly out of here and in here. And to note, if you take that away, it literally does just spit the items out onto the floor. So this could be used um, as some sort of like long range feeding device. You could have wheat coming out of here and feed your animals or what have you, you know, whatever. But um so to get these pipes back I think I can just mine yeah, just one hit and they're done. I'll grab this. Uh don't know what to get the engine back with. Let's try a pickaxe. Yep. So um I think I might leave this space down here for my crucible. Um and I might actually move my kiln here because there's more space underground to have the turntables to make it easier to stoke things. So I'll build my hopper netherrack processing plant upstairs, but um, over in the corner, I reckon. But I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to design it or what it's going to look like. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it, and we'll see what happens. Okay then, this is what I've come up with. I know it's ugly, but it's functional. Um, the only thing that's missing from the design, obviously, is a spout here producing a water source block, flowing water to this end hopper. But as it stands at the moment, this hopper is powered, so I can place items in here, a full stack, and it will drop them one by one on top of this hopper, which is also powered. So this hopper is going to hold my soul sound filter. So this always has to be powered. I'm not going to have an ability to turn this off, and due to it being in a desert, it should never rain, the windmill should never stop working. This should always be powered, so I shouldn't have any accidents spawning ghasts. Um, and then this hopper is powered above this chest, um, and all that's there for is once the water flow is in, I can just dump my items in there, and they'll flow across into this chest. Um, and I've also left a space here, because once I have the ability to make pottery and get some urns, I can obviously place my urn there, put my eight hellfire dust in there, ground netherrack, sorry, and receive a soul urn. So, but for the moment I just want hellfire dust for hibachi, so I should be able to dump the whole stack in there. This is going to go quickly, so I'll try to show it. I'll dump the whole stack in there and it'll be spewed out onto here, and then, thinking about it actually, it's going to be spewed out there, and then I'm going to have to jump up and grab it. So for the meantime I shall remove this glass as obviously there's no water and just pop in some rudimentary wooden stairs because yeah we're not going to be making anything yet so right I'll try to do this quick as soon as I drop it off a she so there you go you can see it spewing onto there and it was all transferred into hellfire dust 
Oh, you don't know what's happening to my heart then. Um, it's just obviously as I did that, the zombies started banging on the door, and it's very similar to noise to when a hopper explodes and you spawn a ghast. So I did just die a little inside then. But it is just a zombie banging on my door, being a prick. But now we've got our hellfire dust. You can process it in a non-stoked non stewing pot. This is what ended my last Let's Play. I put a shit ton of hellfire dust into a stoked stewing pot, and the, the explosion was massive, and it decimated my entire kind of setup. I lost loads of hibachis. It was devastating. That's why I've started this new Let's Play. But in a non-stoked fire, you can process. Will you be quiet? Trying to make it. Let's play, you bastard. I really hate that, it's really loud. Um, yeah, in a non stoked fire, eight hellfire dust become a concentrated hellfire. Um, so, yeah, I need three concentrated hellfire per hibachi, and obviously, I'm going to want my nine hibachis to stoke my stewing pot because then that'll render glue fastest. Um, but, yeah, I think that might be it for this let's play. Next time, obviously, we'll be moving on to Abarchis, and then I'll be able to stoke my fire, and that'll allow me to make glue, which then means... Oh my god, did I stop sprinting? That's right, I still made it. <laughs> which means I'll be able to produce, yeah, glue, so I can make waterproof pipes. So then, next episode's all going to be about my water management, and it's probably going to be not many time lapses. I'll try to show everything I do, because this is all new to me, and this is what this Let's Play is about, introducing the build craft side of things, so I will be pumping water from the, the rivery lakey place up into some maybe some storage tanks on the top of my factory and then piping water down to my various machines that could utilise water um, in their automation, collecting their products into hoppers. So yeah, there's my good boy. Um, one thing I didn't realise about wolves is just I've never fed this guy and he's obviously in a lit up area but he did have a piece of dung for me the other day, so I will occasionally feed him. He still, still does his job, I guess. Although I suppose it's not nice to come home to file a pile of dog shit on the floor, but it's life in it. So, yeah, thanks for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time.